Well, good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today for uh, some undeniably good news. Uh, this group of people that is with me here today has done an extraordinary amount of work on the issue of affordable housing, uh, and our team first pitched this program of stable homes, stable schools back in 2018 with two overarching goals. The, the initiative was designed first to increase access to housing and housing stability for Minneapolis public school students and their families, and second, to increase educational stability and, and outcomes. We realize that children are not coming into the classroom as a blank slate. They're coming into the classroom with all of the successes and failures of society, one of which uh, is a lack of stabilized housing. And so we felt that it was incumbent on all of us to partner together and step up to make that stability a reality for so many of our students that would then bear fruits in the classroom itself. Uh, and thanks to our partners' willingness to step up, to set aside from the, some of the normal bureaucracy and to think creatively, this project has not just been moving forward. It's bearing some really exceptional results. And here are some of the results. I'm so proud to announce that we have provided uh, housing or prevented homelessness for more than 2,500 Minneapolis public school children and 888 families. We've prevented homelessness uh, or provided housing for 2,500 Minneapolis public school students and 888 families. And that support effectively takes two forms. It's rental assistance or ongoing support for individuals who are experiencing homelessness. And that first form is administered by Minneapolis Public Housing Authority with wraparound services provided by the YMCA. And then the second one is emergency housing stability. And that's immediate assistance that prevents homelessness when a family falls on tough times. They aren't able to make a car payment or they need to get a car fixed. Somebody gets sick and loses their job temporarily and they need that necessary assistance just to get through the month and make the rental payment. And so during the most destabilizing year in modern history, especially in Minneapolis, this initiative has continued to provide a sense of stability for so many families throughout our city. COVID-19, uh, a reckoning with racial justice and a staggering economic downturn that we've seen has hit so many families hard. And by the data, uh, these crises have hit communities of color especially hard, and we know that they've all posed immense challenges to our children, to our parents, uh, and to our teachers. And at the onset of this pandemic, we recognized very quickly that there would be an outsized need for housing support. So we invested $1 million in emergency uh, housing uh, support to expand this initiative's capacity. And just last month, the final applications for that funding were approved, and the final payments have gone out, serving 538 families since May. And I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to mention specifically and call out the, the drive and the commitment from uh, Lucretia Williams. Uh, Lucretia and her team at MPHA have been rising to this challenge and really delivering results for our families in this time of crisis. And again, we've now provided housing for 2,500 kids. And earlier this year, we also expanded the program as well. It used to be focused on 15 schools and has now been expanded to 18 schools, including Falwell, uh, Webster, as well as Whittier. And our team's guiding principle has been to target the limited city resources to those that, that need the assistance most. Uh, and this program success is also important to our shared push here in Minneapolis to have a more equitable and inclusive city uh, with over 90% of the participation coming from families of color. Over 90% participation in the program Stable Schools is coming from families of color. Uh, and if our 2021 budget proposal passes this year, and we certainly expect that it will, uh, we will officially take this program from a pilot to a consistent. Uh, stable homes, stable schools really continues to be uh, a story of partnerships. And there have been so many people and organizations that have stepped up along the way from the Poled 
family foundation that came alongside us early to, to partner and provide some of those first two years of, of housing stability funds, and they remain a very strong partner going forward. Uh, they've also land, laid the groundwork for growing the philanthropic support uh, from other entities, including a recent donation from the Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints. So in conclusion, we know that there's still quite a bit of work to do. But you know, as we climb this ladder towards progress, there's also a need to, to celebrate each one of the additional rungs as we go up. And during the 2019-2020 school year, uh, nearly 2,350, or 6% of our Minneapolis public school population is experiencing homelessness in some form or has during that year. And we know that COVID-19 has exacerbated some of these issues even more so. Uh, and so it's important to recognize how necessary it is for all of these different organizations to step up. Um, and success in school, it starts with a roof over a student's head. Uh, it starts with the ability to get a good night's sleep. It starts with the ability to have walls and a roof over your head and to know where you're going to sleep at night. Without those basic necessities and elements of stability, it's impossible to expect a student uh, from any background to succeed. And so. This is among our most basic needs, and we're going to make sure that those needs are met. Uh, and so with that, I want to turn it over to a friend and a partner in this work, uh, Commissioner Irene Fernando, who has been a, a supporter and a proponent of this program since day one and has such, done such good work for both children as well as those facing homelessness over at Hennepin County. Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor Fry. Hello, I am Commissioner Irene Fernando from Hennepin County District 2. Hennepin County is thrilled to partner on this incredibly important effort where our role is to provide essential support services to help families succeed. It's critical that we continue this work so children and families thrive. We'd like to thank the state for increased funding on behalf of the Stable Homes Stable School Project, which resulted in an additional $800,000. This will provide financial assistance and support services to families whose housing is at risk over the coming years. I also want to note how great it is to see the breadth of our partners, government, nonprofit, and private sector all working together. This is a collective effort that needs everyone at the table. We can all cite studies that show safe and stable housing is instrumental to increasing youth's opportunities for educational success. Research tells us that barriers like not having stable housing impacts everything in a young person's life, including how they learn. We know students who have experienced homelessness are less likely to graduate from high school and less likely to go on to secondary level education programs. This is not acceptable and this is why we're here. Studies aside, it's simple. If you don't know where you're going to lay your head at night, it is a lot harder to learn, to focus, to build relationships. This is a bold initiative that has proven to be successful, so we are excited to go from pilot to permanent with stable homes, stable schools. During this pandemic, it is even more imperative that we ensure our youngest residents have an equitable chance at success in life. Youth are our future. We all, each of us, have a stake in their journey, and therefore, we have a responsibility toward their success. Thank you for the partnership, and I look forward to the years to come. Thank you, Commissioner Fernando. And next we have a uh, director uh, on our school board, uh, Kim Ellison, who has been uh, a constant supporter of this program and has helped so great. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Fry. Um, thank you so much for your leadership on, on the Stable Home, Stable Schools uh, initiative. I'm like really excited to see the partners here as well. Um, seeing representatives here, I'm struck by the fact that this is done too rarely, um, and this is how we need to do work going forward more often. Um, while we've known that a safe, stable place to, lay, to call home is critical for student learning, this pandemic has underscored it in a way that we never, ever imagined. Um, at a time when home is literally the classroom, having a place to call home is so very much more important. One of my favorite parts of this initiative is the approach 
um, that we focus on those needs that the students have. Um, I think that's exactly the, the sort of child-centered approach we need to take from now on. Minneapolis Public Schools is grateful to have a city that is working toward preventing and eliminating homelessness. And so thank you again, Mayor Fry, and to all the partners. Thank you, uh, Director. And you know, the next person that I'm gonna invite up deserves so much credit, uh, credit in managing this, this program. L Lucretia Williams runs the Housing Choice Voucher Program uh, over with, with MPHA. She's done an exceptional job and we so appreciate the partnership. Hi, my name is Lucretia Williams and I am the Manager of Partner Engagement in the Housing Choice Voucher Program with the Minneapolis Public Housing Authority. I'm excited to be here today to celebrate the success and accomplishments of our Stable Home, Stable Schools pilot program and more importantly to celebrate making this into a permanent part of our work as we are working to address homelessness in Minneapolis. Stable Home, Stable Schools arose from our belief in the fundamental connection between housing and education. We know that providing support to our children in critical times can break a cycle of intergenerational poverty. We launched this partnership with the city based upon research showing that if we reach children with stable housing when they are young enough, we can increase um, their financial success over a lifetime. And we did that intentionally by bringing together the right partners, like our school social workers, the YMCA, and the Polad Foundation, in order to surround families with the needed and right supports. Today we have reached more than 2,500 children Again, that's either providing homes to those who have been homeless or in providing the essential support needed for those at the brink. I certainly want to acknowledge the team at MPHA that has worked diligently to design this program in partnership and to bring eligible families on board and certainly to help make those crucial connections to our property owners here in Minneapolis. We certainly need to take a moment to recognize and thank our current property owners because without you as landlords supplying the rental units for our families to move into, there would be no Stable Home Stable Schools program. So for those of you watching today and listening in, we encourage you to approach our program if you are willing to make a difference for a deserving family. And lastly, I certainly want to thank Mayor Fry and Superintendent Graff for their constant belief in the Stable Home, Stable Schools program. We are very excited to continue our partnership in providing families the opportunity to connect with us in a deeper level where we can see the, the change and the impact while providing this really safe program for families to access so that we can see the change for thousands of children in our city. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lucretia, and thank you so much for all of your work. It's been so essential. Um, next, I'd like to in invite up Glenn Gunderson with the uh, YMCA, who has been a steadfast partner since day one to provide those necessary wraparound services and supports to those families in our Stable Homes, Stable Schools program. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to all the partners, the Stable ho uh, Schools, Stable Homes. We are so grateful uh, to be a part of this program. Uh, I want to say that it is vital and we must ensure that youth and families have safe places to live and to continue their academic journeys through distance learning. Our housing navigators have worked to house 75 families 
to date, with two more uh, pending. Our family support specialists have found ways to provide very personal, in-depth, and holistic support to families through a mix of virtual and in-person engagements. Amidst the pandemic and all of the difficulty, they have furthered our collaboration with school social workers to best support the whole family in the transition to distance learning. The Y is dedicated to youth and de development. It's our very essence. Uh, we know how important it is that our children have an adequate, equitable, safe, and enriching environment from which to learn, grow, and thrive. The well-being of our youth and their families is a priority, and yet, Beyond physical health, mental health has become a very dynamic concern for our community, exacerbated by the pandemic. And ensuring safe places to get the counsel needed is vitally important. Our Y team provides family support and connection to critical resources. We have officially launched, launched our employment program, filling a gap in our services by addressing the barriers families are facing, employment, economic stability, income, stabilizing their very finances. One-on-one -on -one and group workshops facilitate this work. Our Parent Advisory Council is growing to include more program participants with valuable feedback on how stable homes, stable schools can better serve and foster a sense of community amongst participants. It is important to note the strength of the relationships between Y support specialists and the youth and families that they serve. Together they are navigating a challenging world and finding solutions that are helping provide stability. Stability, a very simple word, a simple concept, but so lost on so many in our community. Stability is a much needed foundation in which to build upon and to give hope for a better and brighter tomorrow. We look forward to further collaborating with you, Mayor, and with all of you partners as we continue to serve these amazing family and youth throughout our community. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you so much for the partnership with the YMCA. It has been invaluable. Uh, next up is really an extraordinary person. Uh, Venetia Hubbard uh, has some stories to share, and I've, I've heard her speak before, and she is nothing short of extraordinarily powerful. Thank you, Mayor, for that. So, not even a full year ago, my family and I were experiencing homelessness. I provided a strong foundation of love and support for my sons up until about they were five and a half years old. We had to move from our home because I suddenly lost my job of employment. Um, my twins are delightful, curious, kind young boys who were born with specific challenges that interfere with their learning and causes them to be discrepant from their peers academically and socially. They both require speech services and special education support in order to be successful in their school settings. I started to see a drastic change in my kids physically and emotionally. They were often sometimes late to school or absent because in most cases transportation would take a week to set up every time we moved to a different location. The end of the school days were very emotional for them as they were often worried about where the bus was taking them and where they would be going. I often noticed them preoccupied by belongings like particular pencils and toys because when you move around a lot, it's easy to misplace things or lose things. So much of their time and energy spent focused and worried about basic necessities like a safe home and a place to keep your things. Seeing my six-year-old boys like this, it had made me reach my low point. And I was not that attentive and responsive parent that I used to be because I was working tirelessly to provide a stable home for my family. And I just cannot catch a break. If it wasn't for the YMCA or the Stable Home, Stable School program, I don't know where my family would be. Fast forward to now, every morning my sons wake up in their own rooms, making their own beds, ready to get, for the, get ready for the day, knowing exactly where their things are. It has, this program has allowed me to effectively keep in contact with my kids' teachers and be involved in their learning plan and helping them progress and reach their goals. We've even turned a dense space in our home into a classroom and my kids absolutely love it. I'm so proud to see them excel academically. It's really, truly amazing to watch them grow every day. 
They no longer have to worry about housing insecurity. They're more worried about going outside, being kids, playing their bike, making new friends, starting up new conversations with the neighborhood kids. This was something that my sons never did. The very first thing that I got from this program was a support system, and it was something really that my family really needed during this time. I have a family support specialist, and she encouraged me. Everyone understands me and empowers me daily. And I have realized that it takes all of us to create a community that cares for e each other, especially in 2020. I recently joined the Parent Advisory Council and is just filled with amazing people with their hearts full of experience, ready to share their stories and resources and the will to lift another family and give back. I am truly so humble and grateful for this program, and I just want everyone to know that the investment in my family will not be lost. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Venetia, for your courage uh, and your partnership as well. So with that, we will open it up to, to any questions you might have. <laughs> 